For years, ufologists have been collecting reports from pilots in the military who claim to have had contact with UFOs. Unfortunately, these reports remain unconfirmed because the pilots are reluctant to come forward. But now, one former military pilot is talking. In Russia, Maxim Cherbakov was so convinced he'd been fired on by an alien spacecraft, he went to court to prove it. Two years ago, a pilot in Russia came forward and told of a frightening UFO encounter. Risking ridicule, Maxim Cherbakov was determined to tell what he maintains is the true story of his bizarre experience. At 19, Cherbakov was one of the rising stars in the Soviet military flight academy and became the Russian equivalent of a top gun. His flying record was impeccable until August 1991. Then, on two separate occasions, he had strange mechanical malfunctions in his jet aircraft. On one occasion, he was forced to eject. An investigation of that incident concluded that Cherbakov had acted calmly and rationally. But 12 days later, a third incident would change Cherbakov's life forever. August. 20th August. Second ship. I made two flights with my commander, and third flight I made on my own. I gained an altitude of 3,900 meters. Then suddenly, I saw a ball in front of me, about 20 degrees to the right. He watched the object for several seconds. Then, as it came toward him, Cherbakov tried to radio the base. The light from the UFO was blinding. A sense of unexplainable fear came over me. On the back of my head, I began experiencing warmth. I felt as if someone was present and watching me. My movements were under control, controlled by someone other than me. Cherbakov claims the reddish-yellow object started maneuvering around the aircraft. For several minutes, it kept up with the jet's airspeed and mimicked its movements. During that time, Cherbakov was unable to communicate with his base commander. The radio emitted only a squealing sound. Pilot Cherbakov's description of the UFO moving relative to his own airplane is really quite common. Dr. Richard Haynes has documented over 3,000 pilot sightings of UFOs. I have thousands and thousands of cases of pilots in daylight encounters with structured objects in the sense of having three-dimensional mass, in the sense of having aerodynamic kinds of, of uh, uh, flight behavior relative to the aircraft. And so what he describes here fits in very nicely to what I have from hundreds of other pilots around the world. Suddenly, in rapid-fire succession, the generator in Cherbakov's jet failed. The instruments indicated a fire on board, and the cockpit filled with smoke. The base commander ordered Cherbakov to eject. I began arguing with the commander because the plane was still above the residential area. My altitude began to drop rapidly. I had to pull the plane out of a nose dive. At the altitude of 1,000 meters, I finally cleared the residential area and I ejected. Four seconds later, the plane exploded. Cherbakov landed safely in a field and was rescued an hour later by a military helicopter. While officials combed the wreckage of the jet, Cherbakov was examined at a military hospital. An intensive three-day interrogation followed. The interrogation was conducted with a sense of total distrust toward me. Right from the start, they told me that the first, the second, and now the third incident is all your own doing. Cherbakov was also interrogated by the KGB, who did not believe his story and charged him with insubordination and sabotage under the International Terrorism Act. Cherbakov claims the KGB threatened that if he did not tell the truth, he would be brought to trial, found guilty of terrorism, and shot by a firing squad. Vladimir Azhaja heads the Russian Center for the Study of UFOs, housed in the Ministry of the Interior in Moscow. Dr. Azhaja is considered one of the world's foremost experts on UFO phenomena and has studied Cherbakov's case. We concluded that Maxim has a normal, healthy psyche and is not inclined to fantasies. Retired Major General Albert Stubblewine is a former commanding general of U.S. Army Intelligence. He witnessed and documented a hypnosis session conducted with Cherbakov by an American psychiatrist. As she was taking him into the trance, he changed from this terrorized, fear-ridden kid into a pilot sitting in the cockpit, sitting in the seat, 
sitting with the controls, relating what was going on. There was a change in the individual. Anybody can fabricate. The question is, was he fabricating? And he struck me as a person who, in that situation, was not fabricating. Whatever it was that he was saying, he truly believed had happened to him. Maxine really believed he had not done anything wrong, in fact, had done the right thing, um, and desperately wanted this sorted out. Although affidavits to that effect were presented at his court-martial hearing, the court still blamed Cherbakov for the destruction of his aircraft. But the military prosecutor admits that some of the evidence of Cherbakov's innocence was very convincing. From the beginning, I had doubts about the truthfulness of Cherbakov's statement. But after questioning his mother, his comrades, and his superiors, I became convinced that Cherbakov had an encounter with a UFO. In January 1992, the case against Maxim Cherbakov was dropped. But despite this vindication, he was not welcomed back into the military. There is no training for pilots to deal with such encounters. The older pilots told me that a lot of encounters happen, but they don't speak about them. I feel that I'm missing something from my soul that I want very much. My love for the planes and flying has remained and will continue to remain. There is now a movement underway in Russia to award Cherbakov with a medal for heroism. According to UFO researcher Richard Haynes, up to 15% of all pilots, both military and commercial, have reported some kind of contact with the UFO. Haynes believes the actual number could be quite a bit higher, since countless pilots are understandably reluctant to come forward.